Cardiovascular Consultants presents its patient education series. Dr. David Brill discusses transradial cardiac catheterization. Cardiac catheterization is a procedure in which a patient undergoes an examination that makes x-ray dye pictures of blood vessels, usually the arteries of the heart. That procedure has been called in the past a coronary arteriogram or an angiogram. The, the procedure involves passing a flexible little plastic tube through a blood vessel up to the heart, injecting x-ray dye to visualize the blood vessels and to determine if there are any cholesterol blockages or obstructions in the arteries to the heart. Interventional procedures are procedures that we perform if an obstruction is identified in an artery to the heart that is severe enough to justify correcting the obstruction and restoring the blood supply back to normal. Today I would like to just talk about some of the technical aspects of how the procedure is done and about an innovation in the performance of this procedure which we offer at my hospitals which are Washington Adventist Hospital and also Shady Grove Adventist Hospital and which we have available in our practice. Normally the cardiac catheterization procedure is done by inserting the catheter, which again is a little flexible, thin, long plastic tube into an artery in the groin area. When we say the groin area, we're really referring to the bend in the hip area when the leg is flexed. In this area, there is an artery known as the femoral artery, which goes down to the foot, and if you follow the course of the blood vessel backwards in the reverse direction of blood flow, the artery will lead the physician with a catheter inside the artery back up to the heart. The catheter is then used to inject x-ray dye to make pictures of the arteries of the heart. The femoral artery has traditionally been used in the United States for this procedure and also for interventional procedures, procedures in which we correct or fix obstructions by inserting stents or little metallic mesh-like structures inside the arteries. In the United States, the statistics are roughly 98% of the procedures are done via the femoral artery, the artery in the groin. The area is cleaned, washed off sterilely with an antiseptic. It is isolated with sterile drapes. A local anesthetic is administered with a small injection into the surface of the skin. The femoral artery is punctured. A little tube is inserted into the anesthetized area of the skin in the artery and through the little tube, which we call a sheath, a longer tube again the catheter, the long, thin, flexible plastic tube that goes up to the heart is threaded up to the heart to allow us to make pictures and to insert stents if necessary. The femoral artery works very well as an approach and there's no problem using the femoral artery. However, after a catheterization procedure using the femoral artery, a patient must lie still and must lie flat for a period of anywhere uh, between uh, one and a half hours to four to six hours. There is also a small risk of bleeding when the femoral artery is used, and bleeding in the area of the femoral artery can sometimes be severe. Because the tissues are very soft around the femoral artery, the femoral artery is deep, bleeding can occur, and sometimes it is not always apparent to the physician and the staff that there has been a bleeding problem or issue when catheterization is done through the femoral artery. Now fortunately, bleeding complications from the femoral artery are very uncommon. Bleeding complications in the femoral artery average on the order of approximately one out of a hundred. And bleeding complications are usually not severe um, or life-threatening, but there are rare instances where there can be actually life-threatening bleeding even deep inside the pelvic area, right next to where the artery goes when it leaves the groin area and starts to travel up towards the heart. For this reason, physicians many years ago looked for alternative ways to do the catheterization procedure. They were specifically concerned with patient comfort, trying to find a, an avenue or a route to pass a catheter up to the heart whereby a patient would not need to lie still for an extended period of time. And the pioneers of this alternative uh, procedure for threading a catheter up to the heart also were concerned about reducing the risk of bleeding and bleeding complications. A new procedure is developed called transradial catheterization. 